Hey guys, so Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on deoxyribonucleic acid. And it's actually a big word for the, for the uh, three letters combined, DNA. So DNA is a double helix. That means it has two things that come together and they sort of twist. Uh, kind of like a slinky, only we have two on each side. So what is DNA? Well, it is the information that determines what an organism's uh, traits are like. And if you remember anything about traits, it is what you look like. So uh, traits are things that you look like, and DNA produces proteins, which give, uh, which will allow proteins to make skin, hair, uh, bones, etc. And one important thing to know about uh, proteins is that they are also um, some some of them are also enzymes. Enzymes can control uh, chemical reactions in your body. So ultimately, if you had DNA that screwed up, it would produce proteins that screwed up. Um, if it produced enzymes that are screwed up, those chemical reactions would be screwed up. So DNA contains all the information for making um, all proteins in the human body. DNA is made up of repeating subunits called nucleotides. And they, those nucleotides have three parts. They have the sugar the phosphate group, and they have the nitrogen base. Right here that I'm circling here, that's the sugar group. That's the ribose. Uh, right here that I'm circling here, that's the phosphate, and right here is the nitrogen base. Uh, you can see here that this is all the same in each one of these. The only difference is the nitrogen base. That's this right here. And that's because we only have four different nitrogen bases. So DNA is ultimately ma only made up of four different nitrogen bases. Again, here's a zoomed-in image, the phosphate group there, the, the sugar group there, and the nitrogen uh, group right there. The simple sugar is called deoxyribose. And why is it called deoxyribose? Well, because right here, uh, normally there is an oxygen and a hydrogen, but uh, again, D means without, and so that one right there is missing an oxygen. So deoxy, missing an oxygen. Um, but anyway, don't get caught up in that too much right now. The phosphate group is, is, is right here. The phosphate's in the middle and is composed of all these oxygen groups on the outside. So DNA, again, has four possible uh, structures, and that's T, A, C, or G. Uh, the T stands for thymine, the A stands for adenine, the C stands for cytosine, and the G stands for guanine. This guy right here is the thymine, this guy right here is the adenine, this guy right here is a cytosine, and this guy right here is a guanine. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference in each one of these. Um, some of them have two of those like weird shaped things, and then uh, some of them only have one of those weird shaped things. And what's kind of interesting is that we always need two of those weird shaped things to come in, in contact with those one of those weird shaped things. So T is always going to bind to A, and C is always going to bind to G. So nucleotides come together and they form long chains. You can see here, this is what we call the backbone of DNA. Uh, where we have the phosphate group and the sugar group come together, and the phosphate group and the sugar group come together um, enough to form this here backbone. All this right here is the backbone of DNA. No matter where you're looking on DNA, it's exactly the same. The only difference is right here, which we, uh, which we call the teeth of DNA, or the A and the T and the C and the G. That's the only different part of DNA. You can sort of think of it like this. If we had a ladder, you know that on the outside, no matter what, it's always going to be the same. And on the inside, the, the steps can be different. Um, some steps are longer than others. Some steps are skinnier than others, etc. But the outside, the, the rung of the, D, of the ladder is always going to be the same. That's kind of like the backbone. So what happens in DNA is that nitrogen bases pair up. So again, this is one of the most important things known in all biology. I'm going to put a star next to it. Is that A always binds to, C, to T. You can see that right here. A always binds to T, and A always binds to T, but then C always will bind to G. Um, and so here I have in purple represented the backbone of the DNA. Here's the backbone of the DNA. But the middle part, the rungs of the ladder, can be different. But always they're going to be complementary to each other. So that means if I had a C on this side, an A on this side, a G on this side, a T on this side, you can always figure out what is going to be on this side just based on what you find over here. Watson and Crick were two gentlemen, two really smart gentlemen that came up with the idea 
of what the, the what DNA looks like in, the, in 1953, so that's almost 60 years ago. They proposed that DNA is twisted like a zipper. Two chains of nucleotides joined by new nitrogen bases uh, through hydrogen bonds. So the bonds in between, I'm going to go back to this for a second. These bonds that are in between the G and the C are what's known as hydrogen bonds. They're not very strong, but nonetheless, they hold that whole DNA together. So again, DNA is, uh, has two strands. Um, I'm, I'm going to circle one, I'm going to highlight one, and then I'm going to highlight the other. So that's two strands of DNA, and it's twisted like a spiral, sort of like a slinky, all together. So the deoxyribose sugar of one of the, the, the nucleotides joins with the phosphate group of the adjacent nucleotide to form one strand. So what does that all mean? Well, here's a sugar that I'm circling. Here's the phosphate group, and that forms the backbone, and all those bind together to form long strands, and uh, right in here, the nucleotides bind together to form different segments of DNA. Each one of these segments is going to be different just based on the simple order of everything. So one thing I, that I want you all to know is that the sequence of the four different nucleotides can be different in every organism. Again, if we only have A, T, G, uh, and C, if that's the only four possible ones that we have, but we have hundreds of thousands of these these pairs bound together, uh, the order of things makes things look different. You can see, think of that sort of like um, the letters in Earth, E A R T H. Well, heart has those same letters now, doesn't it? And so Earth has the E in the front. But what if we take the H and we stick it over here? We get the word heart. Now I'm going to take for granted that you all know that there's a difference between what a Earth is and what a heart is. But nonetheless, though. Those things are made of the same letters, but they mean totally different things. So just the fact that we only have four letters available in DNA, but the order that we put them in can make your organisms look totally different. For example, um, let's say that, or, uh, that, for example, that us human beings are 100%. Uh, gorillas share 97% of those nucleotides. That means that 97% of the A, the T, the G, and the C all combined, the different order of them, is the same. 97% of the DNA between me and a, and a gorilla are exactly the same. And in a flower, even though pff, you look at a plant like, hey, there's no way I'm related to that, 60% of you and a plant's nucleotide sequence or the order of the A, T, G, and the C is exactly the same. And guess this, a chimpanzee, you, you share 90, 99% of the DNA with a chimp. That means the order of the A, T, G, and the C is 99% the same between you and a chimpanzee. Kind of weird to think about. So anyway, the order of things in ter determines what things look like. Um, it also determines how similar they are. So all of these things are flowers, they are probably pretty similar to one another just because of the simple fact that they are also flowers. But hey, there, here's this whale right here, which is going to have some different, it's, it's going to have a different sequence of DNA than all these flowers. Uh, but nonetheless, that, that difference in DNA is going to make him look like him, which is kind of weird to think about. Some subtle little changes make everybody look different. Anyway, that's DNA structure, and I'm Mr. Herbst. I'm signing off, folks. Y'all have a nice day.